Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. And today's first story is, I am not a guide for haunted attractions. Well, it seems I can't escape the I don't work here moments at haunted attractions. Last night, I went to a haunted attraction with a friend. If you read my previous haunted attraction one, then I have to say this, it was a different friend and different attraction. Also, sorry this is long, for me this was a curious thing, which I didn't realize was an I don't work here lady moment for most of the night. The night started with my friend and I going to this haunted attraction. We were wearing our skeleton outfits so we got to look spooky together. You can wear costumes to these things. When we check in, the lady at the window stopped and asked what I was doing out of costume. After we chatted for a bit and her showing me a photo, turns out someone who looks just like me works there. I showed her my ID and she laughed at the strangeness of it all. My friend and I thought it was funny too. We joked and chuckled as a rather large group seemed to be following us. We spoke to each other the oddness that there was a group of over 30 kids, whom looked like young teens at most here without more adults. It was kinda odd. However, they were pretty chilled so we didn't pay them much mind. Every once in a while one would run over to us and ask a question, but it was pretty chilled. Then Hayride came and we got on board, my friend and I making jokes and such. It was fun, and everyone but me have so much fun at the clown moment. I am scared of clowns and the clowns use this to their advantage, to have me say the iconic horror line, he's behind me isn't he, and the clowns saying stuff like, we know where you live. All in good fun, and since we knew some people who worked at this attraction and were playing the clowns, they pretty much pulled me around the hayride for kicks. Got to love having friends who were scaring professionals. After the hayride, my friend and I chatted on which part to do next. Um, is it just me or are we surrounded? Asked my friend as the group of kids appeared next to us with those couple of adults in tow. Yeah, escape to the haunted house, I asked. Yep, she said, and we ran off trying to get away from the group, as neither of us do good with crowds. Funny thing, those kids were fast. They kept up. So we ended up at the haunted house with a group of kids and couple of adults in tow. And yep, the group we were put in had a few of the kids who seemed very eager. And yes, questions ensued. My friend and I tried to ignore the kids. However, that was much harder this time, as they would go the wrong way, try to hit the actors, or not even sure how, get stuck on the set pieces. As my friend and I knew some of the actors and how hard it is to put on the show, we were doing our best to keep these kids from making a mess of things. It was like babysitting without getting paid, yet with awesome things around. Bright side was no one complained about the fact that my friend and I were having fun trying to spook each other out too. I mean I did disappear at one point in the haunted house as part of a magic act, only to jump out from behind a tombstone at the graveyard. Best placement of an exit tunnel ever. After the haunted house, my friend and I got some drinks because we were thirsty and pondered about the bathroom. The kids were still nearby and asking us for permission to do stuff like get drinks, to which we said, why should we care? If you want to, you can. You just have to buy it, so if you don't have money for it, you can't get it. So we went to the haunted maze. Again, kids from the group were following us. By the time it was our turn, the whole group of kids were in the line, with a couple of adults in tow. At this point, I was questioning if those adults even knew how to speak. And true to form, some of the kids were in our group. This wouldn't have been much of a bother if it wasn't for the fact that when things suddenly turned black and completely dark, I was clung to by a screaming girl. That would have been okay-ish if it wasn't for the fact that when she tackled me to cling to me, she got my neck, so she was choking me. So, in the middle of the maze, in complete darkness, I am struggling with a young teen girl, whom is pretty much hugging my neck. It would have been pretty funny if I had been able to breathe. One of the other kids got the girl off me and I panted for air. Besides that moment, the maze wasn't bad, yet again stopping the kids from fighting with the actors. After the maze, my friend and I decided to eat some Halloween foods, like their fried Oreos and the pumpkin ice cream. We were sitting as we noticed the kids were waiting for the other kids. We only noticed this. The kids were getting there after event snacks or whatever. I was tossing out our trash as the one boy yelled, I'm going to the bathroom, and he started to run in my direction, which was towards the bathroom. Terrible design reared its ugly head. I noticed between the trash cans and the bathroom was the tractor path, and the boy was heading straight for an oncoming tractor. The boy got to me and I scooped him up as the tractor got to us. I put him down next to me. Are you insane? Didn't you see the tractor? You could have been run over. Thank God you're all right. Don't do that again, you hear? I yelled. The boy stared at me and then thanked me. After the tractor passed, he went to the bathroom. That was when one of the adults came up to me. I was prepared to get chewed out by a parent for touching their kid or yelling at the kid. Thank you so much. You really do a good job here. Do I give you the tip or do I give it to your boss? Said the woman. Excuse me? I asked confused. Tip. You're an excellent guide for our school trip. You even saved one of our students, she said smiling at me. That was when it dawned on me. The reason the kids kept following us around and asking questions. Um, sorry, I don't work here. I'm not a guide, I said to the woman. The woman looked at me rather surprised. What? But you showed the kids around. You answered their questions. The workers touched you. They're not allowed to touch us, she said, sounding very confused. I laughed. Um, yeah, see, those are my friends. They work here. I don't. 
So yeah, my friends know I'll play along and we would never hurt each other. So yeah, not a guy, just a friendly person who didn't want to see anyone get hurt. But if you are their teacher, you should tell them not to pick fights with the people working here. That's an issue. No one wants to get hurt, I said to her. She smiled and walked off to the group. I rejoined my friend and told her what was going on. She got a laugh out of it. We were chilling out for a bit, still drinking some hot cocoa, when the group of kids and the adults came up to us and all said thank you together before they left. Man, I wish my school did trips like this, said my friend. Me too. Not sure if they really are a school, but with that many kids per adult, I sure hope, I replied, before we left and went to enjoy watching Halloween movies for the rest of the night. The second story is, Cancer Patient's Mom Should Do Your Job. Warning, there is a bit of this as backstory to help understand the situation. In late 2018, I was diagnosed with stage 4 tongue cancer. In early 2019, I had surgery to get it removed, basically losing most of my tongue, having part of my left arm to reconstruct it, and part of my throat was removed. That made eating impossible, so I was also given a feeding tube, which is located on my left side of my stomach. I haven't eaten real food since January 2019. After that, I went through rehab for 2 weeks, and then I had chemotherapy and radiation for 6 weeks. My chemo wasn't too bad, being that it wasn't the regular kind and I only had it once a week, but radiation was a B, being that I had to lay down with a mask on my face and stay perfectly still for 20 or so minutes at a time, 5 days a week, which meant my mom, grandmother and I were forced to stay in a hotel for those weeks. We are from the south part of the state, my mom and I actually lived over the state line and the hospital is 3 hours away, meaning we had to stay close during that time. Thankfully you can get reimbursed, for lodging and gas if you live far away. So, we sent in receipts and they would pay us back. Fast forward, I also had a lung collapse, getting a chest tube to fix it and having it put back in which it disconnected, blood clots in my arm which swollen up and a biopsy of my lung and around my feeding tube to check places that showed up on a CT scan, making the doctors think it might have been cancer, which thankfully it wasn't. And the doctors did another CT scan a couple of weeks ago and the spots were still there on my lung and around my feeding tube. They wanted to do another couple of biopsies to check once more, so they had to schedule it, which for some reason they had to get it approved by the hospital, which we would get a call at a later date. Approved for the Tuesday before Halloween 2019, we head out to go. On the way there, my caseworker, let's call her D, calls my mother in the car. She tells my mom to get reimbursed for our trips, they need a 7 day notice to do so. They didn't give them a notice in the right amount of days, only 4 days notice, so we might not get paid back. After we get back from the trip, D and my mother were talking on the phone. D tells her that she tried to get them to pay but she had no luck. Then she had the audacity to say to my mom, maybe you can get them to do it by calling them. Now, you might be thinking, why hadn't I been talking to her? Which I can't talk well over the phone to where they would understand me and my mom had took secretary classes or whatever in college. She does things of that nature. I was annoyed by D basically wanting my mother to call and get this taken care of. One being that my mother didn't make the appointment, the hospital did, which made them not have enough days. Two, we had been going appointments for half a year, paying out a bunch of money to travel and stay in their city and for my mother and whoever at the time was with us to eat and having to deal with my body problems, feeding tube leaks, me being malnourished, the pain I have all over etc. Three, it was D's effing job to fix it, not ours. But my mother doesn't make a fuss with doctors and people that are helping me recover, so she calls other people. This works out poorly, one number says call this number, the next says call this number, then one number said call this number and have them do something and then call me back. Let's just say my mother gave up after that last number and just settled with it. Being the one that had to deal with cancer and the annoying recovery that has come with it, I wish I could talk on the phone to D. I'd come back after being told to call for her with, that's fine, I'll surely do your mother effing job, seeing that you're incompetent or should I say a lazy AB that can't do her effing job. Though I should say that paycheck you somehow magically get will now go into my D bank account, since a dip SH like you doesn't deserve it, since you're being a lazy B, not trying harder at your effing job. The third story is, no good deed goes unpunished. This morning my wife and I are getting ready to go to BJ's. For those that don't know, BJ's is a bulk membership store like Sam's Club or Costco. They also send out a coupon book to members every month and as we're looking at the coupons, this morning, I noticed they had three different ones for bags of Halloween candy. Not knowing which one we wanted, I clipped all three and we figured we would just decide at the store. We ended up getting two of the three, one with hard candy and one with chocolates. We had one coupon left over and like we usually do if we have a coupon we're not going to use, we were going to leave it on the shelf near the candy in case somebody else wanted to use it. So here's the details, BJ's employees wear red polo shirts and name badges. My wife is in black stretch pants with a long t-shirt and a black hoodie. I'm a walking dad joke, flip flops, cargo shorts, green long sleeve tee and ball cap from our daughter's university. Hashtag go Seahawks, hashtag hawk yeah. While pushing a cart that at the time had two bags of Halloween candy and a 96 count box of granola bars. There is no way we should be confused for employees in our hobo chic getups, or so you would think. As we turned the corner to go back to the spot where the candy lives, we saw two ladies looking at the bag we had the extra coupon for. 
They were both in their 60s, had white hair, and looked enough alike that if I had to guess I would say they were sisters. This was not the first time we had crossed paths. We had walked into the store at the same time, saw them as we both got a cart, and passed by them as they shopped on another aisle. As we walked over to them, they took the bag of candy they were looking at and put it in their cart. My wife says, here, we have a coupon for that we're not going to use if you would like to have it, and hands the first sister, sister number one, the coupon. Sister number one looks at my wife and nods. As my wife turns to walk away, sister number two, in a tone that I'm not sure I can do justice, and says, what? Can we only get one? My wife turned back and said, excuse me? Sister number two, head cocked to the side. I said, why can we only get one coupon? Can't you give me one too? Wife, um, because I only have one? Sister number two looked at my wife, looked at me, looked at my wife again and said, I thought you were giving out coupons for the store. We both sighed, shook our heads, turned and walked away, as my wife said over her shoulder, by the way, you're welcome. The last story is, I do work here, but Halloween edition. A quick laugh from today. My boss and I were in another part of our retail store, going over some things with that department staff and their leader. He was dressed as an Old West Sheriff, complete with boots, a cowboy hat, shiny fake badge and a bandana. As we were walking away, an old man pulls my boss to the side and asks him if all those people were in trouble and who he was arresting. My boss, thinking the old man is joking, says, all of them. The old man looked aghast and asked what they did. At this point, my poor supervisor points out that it is in fact Halloween today and that most of the staff is wearing costumes. The old man wandered away grumbling, still likely wondering who was under arrest. I feel like the elephant Diana Ross and Kitty Cat gathered around should have been a clue. Be safe on Halloween all. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.